Hi guys, welcome back, welcome back. What advice would you give Amber's future girlfriend? Simple. Just don't go there. Nurse, clear my schedule. Why is no one loyal in these YouTube streets? You're bling, bling. That's with Karina Kaboom. Hey. What's wrong with Karina Kaboom? She's a nice lady. <laughs> hey, I'm so scared. Come to my chambers at once. I must discuss something with you. Bring it on! My husband! Why are you walking away so fast? You're walking in uniform. I want my career in yodeling. I've been waiting all week to use it. Hello, everybody. Look at this nice Kermit and this wonderful pizza. In today's video, for the low introductory price sale of absolutely nothing, you heard it here last, Amberlynn's amazing, wonderful, illustrious, delusional rant on Beck's new girl and Destiny being married. You know, Amberlynn, we know that you're over your exes and you have moved on. And as I always say, nothing says I'm over my ex by creating a new video titled how I feel about my exes in the title when you talk about it for five minutes in the actual video and posting that to 200,000 people. Everlyn did not shower the whole time. We were at my mom's. Rinse, lather, delusion, Kermit, repeat. I think Anne Boleyn Reed needs a clap. Congratulations, sweetheart. You're totally over your exes. That's why you keep talking about it. Here's some advice, some free advice no one asked for. If you really want to get over your exes, take the energy and the air out of the room. You want to really let this go? Take it out of the room. Stop talking about it. Stop thinking about it. Up, oh, up. Oh. I get it, Anne Boleyn, you can't because you're not over them. I have to tell you something. If deep down inside you think you're not over your ex, you're not. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe she found the target driver. Anne Boleyn dedicates like a few minutes of her time talking about delusional rant on Beck moving on and Destiny being married. And she tells us all about how she really feels. She's in love and she has her own very own girlfriend. She says there's a lot that she's hiding from us. Really? Hmm. <laughs> oh. And again announces that she has a girlfriend. Anne Boleyn, you were either lying back in February when you said you're not in a relationship and you don't have a girlfriend, or you're lying now with your George Glass vibes, <laughs> sure, Jan, and pretending that you have a girlfriend now. Either way, you were lying. I love me some Anne Boleyn. She's the most entertaining, riveting YouTuber alive today. Prove me wrong. Fight me in the comments in the comments down below. Second part of this video is... Foodie Beauty finally admits there's nothing going on with her and her husband. Bling! Bling! And a Pokemon Go update. I love it when you could just start a video and know it's going to be a good one. Or not. Either way, you see green frogs, you're happy, you move on with your day. All right, if you could not tell already by this ridiculous intro. As always, with all of my videos, everything I'm saying is just for entertainment purposes only and is not meant to be taken seriously whatsoever. Please don't take anything I say seriously. I'm just sharing my own opinions, not facts. I'm publicly accessible information made public by public figures. First, I would urge you to please not go to these people's channels. Please do not go and leave these people any mean spirited. Negative, discouraging, disparaging comments, entertainment purposes only. Before we get into even like what she said in the video, how the video went, I just want to say to get into a delusional, ridiculous rant calling Beck, Becky, first of all, Beck extensively asked you, asked you to stop mentioning them on your channel and stop talking about them. She asked you. And it doesn't matter if people are asking you something. You claim that you have respect. You claim that you're not this bitter and jealous ex. Why are you continuously still talking about Beck? on your channel, monetizing content about Beck on your channel when they asked you to stop talking about them. Also, then to go on this delusional rant, oh, Beck has a girlfriend, Beck has a girlfriend, but I had one first. That is what she says in this video. If you want to know what this video is about, at nine minutes in, she starts talking about how Beck has a girlfriend, but I had one first. And oh, well, and calling her Becky when their name is Beck now. And she knows that their name is Beck because she posted this little disclaimer uh, before in a video stating that she didn't know, but now she knows. Totally disrespecting Beck, obsessing over Beck's ex, monetizing content about your ex when your ex clearly asked you to stop talking about them, going on this delusional rant like, oh, well, I had a girlfriend before Beck did. 
make it make sense. Okay, so Amber actually starts the video at 9 minutes and 40 seconds. My opinion on public figure Amberlynn Reed's video is that I feel that it is a bit disingenuous to title a video how I feel about my exes and start talking about it at 9 minutes and 22 seconds when the video itself is 13 minutes. So the last few minutes of the video you're talking about your exes, how disingenuous. That is defrauding your audience. If the title of your video is how I feel about my exes, you should be talking about it right away. People will watch in that special way that you love <laughs> and we'll just fast forward. Rinse, lather, delulu. Uh, if you're going to title a video, Anne Boleyn got a Kermit 17 times. You better talk about it first. What I'm saying is um, it's a manipulation rudimentary, rudimentary manipulation tactic. <laughs> To get your audience to think the video is about your exes, you talk about it at the end of the video. This is like personally like a thing that like I don't like. I would never do it to my audience. Okay. And by the way, she's doing it because every single video she posts, she wants to manipulate. Like if your video is titled how I feel about my exes. Why exactly are you talking about it all the way at the end? Talk about it in the beginning. Be more genuine so your audience and you have a good relationship. If anyone believes that that's going to happen, I have a massive bridge of Kermits to sell you. Available wherever bridges of Kermits are sold. Nowhere. Okay. Here's what she says. I'm going to read to you what she says, and then I'm going to tell you what's really happening. People contacting her because Beck has a new girlfriend and Destiny got married. People assuming that I'm, quote, single, which I get, that I'm bitter and jealous. Literally, no. No. Do not go there. I want them to move on and be happy. I've been keeping things from you. I do have a love life. I have talked about Valentine before. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to that. But on Instagram, uh, she basically said that she wants everyone to call her girlfriend Valentine. I mean, the level of cringe and what in the George Glass reality is going on? You don't have a girlfriend. Everybody here knows it. And if you had two Kermits, you'd be better off without this fake girlfriend. All you have to do is cream me. So she wants everyone to call her girlfriend Valentine. And she says that she did talk about Valentine before Beck got a girlfriend, before Destiny got married. And how embarrassing. Like, I talked about it first. I did this first. Like, this is not a race. This is another lie that you're setting up for your audience. Uh, my phone's been blowing up. Like, I'm just popular today. I have moved on from Destiny and Beck. I don't want to be known as Destiny and Beck's ex. No worries, you're not. Uh, nobody cares about the relationships that you manipulated and had with them. They are finally both happy and escaped you, so who cares? Here's the thing. Okay, if you watch this video, besides the obviousness of, as I said to you, she's already told you in February she was not in a relationship her new girlfriend, Valentine, how cringe, how cringy that we can't even say her name because no one wants to be associated with you, okay? Uh, basically, sent her a present by mail, meaning that she's not in the same state as her. She's never met her girlfriend. That's what I'm trying to say. Besides these important things of how she already told you she's single, she already told you she's not in a relationship, now she's flipping the whole situation because it's the only thing she can do to you know, put together a narrative that she's been in a relationship all this time. I want you to focus on two things. Number one, it says that she's not single and she says that she has somebody. But ever since she moved to Oklahoma, she has been having multiple on-camera breakdowns, refused to celebrate the holidays, and had a bunch of breakdowns on TikTok over ex-wifey. So you mean to tell me that you've been in a relationship with a person for seven to eight months since September? And you have been in love with your ex-wife and having breakdowns about her and wouldn't even decorate. So I want to know, how does your new girlfriend, who's been around this entire time, Anne Boleyn, this is the problem with lying, you get caught. So here's my question. How exactly does your new girlfriend, Anne Boleyn, who's been around here the entire time, feel about you being not only in love with your ex-wifey the entire time that you've been dating your girlfriend, but having breakdowns about ex-wifey on camera and refusing to celebrate the holidays because of your love for ex-wifey and you can't celebrate with her. 
insert uh, like some really unconvincing looking. Don't exist. They do exist, but we're not sure. <clears throat> All they are to you is just an unexplained phenomenon. That's my suggestion. What I'm trying to say is her story doesn't make sense because that's exactly what it is. It's just a story, a made up fairy tale that she made up because she's embarrassed that basically she's single. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Being single is one of the most special times in your life. You get to figure out how many Kermits you want and pretty much what you want. Instead of saying, I'm happy for Beck, I'm happy for Destiny, and I'm just working on myself, which nobody would have had anything to say about that, she has to lie. Pay attention to the language in this video. She says, people are assuming that I'm single, which I get. People are assuming that I'm bitter and jealous. No. You know how I know that you're bitter and jealous? You've made up a whole relationship that doesn't exist. That's how I know, of course, you're bitter and jealous. And then she also says that people don't know her. Now, this is what I have to say about that. Foodie beauty, my husband, my husband would be keeping the relationship from other people is not true, okay? And this goes hand in hand with her saying that people don't know her. Here's a comment from my latest video. I just pinned this. We've seen how Amber acts when she finds a new girlfriend. She, for the life of her, cannot keep her mouth closed about it. She does live streams and giggles like a high school girl, <laughs> junior, teen, and prom, about her new catch, all the while acting like she doesn't want to talk about it. She can't keep secrets. She can't keep anything to herself. Uh, she even admitted this on camera. She doesn't have anyone, and her acting like she does is going to be the reason why she isn't going to find anyone new. My God, you are the most valuable player. MVP comment right there that's why i pinned it Amberlyn, this girl is not your girlfriend and you are stopping all the future target drivers from contacting you i mean there's some people that will contact her of course you know some people love a challenge like you know me getting my kermit not to pay rent but the point is is that exactly right she is lying and straight out pretending she's in a relationship when she's not and you're gonna stop all the future target drivers from contacting you because you say you're not single point of that comment and the second thing i really want you to pay attention to other than the language is that amber says that she is not single but she's acting like she is on social media she's still doing the thirst traps on social media she's constantly wearing makeup that's not what amber listen amberlyn not gonna wash her hair and do makeup when she's in a relationship come on amber you have not changed you're not a different person you just admitted to lying for years and years about various different topics you are the same person the point is when she has a girlfriend she's not gonna be acting giddy and coy and she's not gonna be uh you know investing a lot in makeup and all of and you know washing her hair and all this other stuff she acts completely different when she is single than when she's in a relationship what could be going on here is she's acting like she's single because she's never met her girlfriend amber you need to find somebody that is real about you serious about you that wants to shout it from the kermit rooftops that they want to be with you not someone that you've never even met if someone is dating you in your mind for eight months you're not together this person could be anyone back to this so pay attention to the language she says that she People are assuming that she is single. Never says I have a girlfriend. Never says I'm in a relationship. Never has said that I'm dating someone. Okay, Amber manipulates language. This is important. I've talked about this before. She uses specific words and language to manipulate her audience so that when this eventually blows up in her face, when eventually this person disappears because they were never there in the first place as a partner, she's going to say this. I never said I had a girlfriend. I never said I was in a relationship. I li Listen, you mark my words. I said that I was not single and I believed that I wasn't because this person and I were talking about being in a relationship. I didn't, this is what's gonna happen. She's gonna say, I didn't feel single. So I said that I'm not, but now this person left. Pay attention to the language. Thank you. 
language. The language is very specific. Number one thing you need to know about Anne Berlin isn't what's constantly talked about, superficial nonsense that doesn't matter. Judge her on her character. Her character is manipulation of language. Always very careful not to say, I have a girlfriend. Always very careful not to say, I'm in a relationship. Just saying, I'm not single. So that when it blows up, when it stops, she's going to say, I didn't feel single. You're not in a relationship. Have people been in those type of relationships in the past and got married and, you know, finally met up with that person? A hundred percent. Ouija, is there a single gentleman here who would like to date me? Nurse, clear my schedule. And I wish you guys all the best. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about this specific person, Amberlyn Reed. Amber. Talking to people through text and phone is not being in a relationship. This woman does not live in your state, which is why she had to send your $400 Lego. You believe that? Bridget Kermit's to sell you wherever Kermit's are sold. Also, so in this video, she says that people don't know her. Okay, I'm going to provide two brief examples of how people do know what's always going on with her. Her point in this video is, I'm keeping things from you. My audience doesn't know who I am. And they don't know what's going on in my life. Two brief examples. Number one, people continuously said, your audience continuously said you had no romantic chemistry with Beck. There was nothing romantic going on. You continuously said that there was. You said your jaw hurt from the loss. And then Beck admitted that there was nothing romantic going on. I bet you're a lot of fun at parties. This is a perfect example of how the audience knew the exact T of what was going on. They knew that there was nothing romantic like, not like you said, maybe there was, not like you said, Anne Boleyn, uh, audience knew there was nothing going on. Okay, she's going to say, well, maybe that's obvious. Here's a less obvious example. When you were dating Destiny, uh, people kind of felt that you were buying her love. You bought her so many Christmas presents and people felt like, you know, maybe, you know, you exerted your wealth. I hope that's a real sentence in the English language and you denied it. Here's another example of how people knew. And Amber never came out and said at that time when she was hanging out with Destiny, when she was with Beck, hey, I'm paying for, you know, whatever, the gas and the bills. People just knew. The point I'm trying to make is your audience knows you very well. How do you think I'm able to predict everything that's going to happen with our girl? Because you're not that difficult to predict, Anne Boleyn. You have a pattern manipulation, manipulation, crying, manipulation, manipulation. I have a girlfriend. I don't. This is my opinion and the opinion of the community. And please let me know what you think in the comments down below. We're going to move on. I believe you are speaking in DMs and just chatting randomly on the phone with a person that doesn't want to be seen with you, that doesn't want to be on your channel because you have a very bad reputation on the internet. That's why she doesn't want to be seen with you, in my opinion, and doesn't want to be on your channel. My opinion is you are not in any type of a relationship because if you were, you would not be disrespecting your partner and crying about wifey for the last six to seven months that you were with this woman and my opinion in the george glass vibes of, in the george glass vibes of the universe you are just now saying that you are in a relationship with this valentine girl because you are desperate to prove that you are wanted like always and that the fact that beck has a new partner and the fact that destiny got married doesn't matter to you because you have a girlfriend you were either lying back then when you said you didn't, or you're lying now. She doesn't live in your state. You've never met her. You've never done anything with her. And if you really are in a relationship all this time, Anne Boleyn, why is it that you were crying over wifey and telling us you weren't in a relationship? See, this one you're not going to get out of because you were either lying back then or you're lying now. Bottom line is she's just chatting with a person that doesn't care enough to move down to Oklahoma. Because if you were truly genuinely not giving a single Kermit about your exes moving on, you would never make a video about it. Who cares that people are messaging you? You did this for views and money and you only got 23,000 views. That's your reach with double the amount of subscribers than me? She's getting my type of views, but she has double my subscribers, right, Amber? Okay, the bottom line in this situation, Amber, my genuine advice to you, if I was your friend, is focus on yourself. 
focus on your well-being. Forget all these fake girls that are clearly, Amber, honey, she's just not that into you. She hasn't moved to your state. You've never met her. And the bottom line in this situation is, like that commenter said, you pretending with your George Glass vibes, sure, Jan, she doesn't even go here, right? Like what people in my comments said, like, hey, you know, uh, I have a girlfriend, but she doesn't go to the school vibes. Amber, you pretending that you're in a relationship to pacify the drama that you got a girlfriend first before Beck and Destiny is just going to stop other people from reaching out to you. And since I want you to be happy and wish you all the best, I highly advise you to cut this out. But you won't because you need to prove to the haters that you have a girlfriend. Great. Can't wait how you get out of this lie. She's learned nothing from the lies about wifey being two different wifey. She's learned nothing from the doctor lies that she's been lying about. Anyways, let's move on to Foodie Beauty. She would be laying on the bed. I'd be laying across the bed the other way. And she would lay right at, right by my head at his feet. And we would watch a movie. Because I'm more comfortable when I watch a movie, like, laying this way. Up it with your excuses. Everyone here knows that that part of your life isn't actually going on. And I think that much like your lies about fasting, which you did not have to lie about fasting. You could have just said, hey, you know, I have diabetes. I can't fast. People would have understood. Like I always say, it's not about what these girls are actually doing, or in this case, not doing. It's really about the lying. People would have understood that maybe your relationship has, oh, I don't know, waned or never happened in the first place. Sorry, Evil Frog made me say that. No, that was me. I don't think there was ever anything seriously going on. And I'm going to give you an example. So uh, remember her ex now boyfriend She would come on screen and it was obvious. It was clear that there was something going on. Uh, there's nothing going on here. Or if it did happen a few times, it's done. It's over with. Not only did he cheat on you and tell you well, tell the woman that he would give up his entire family for her, a stranger on the internet. But he told you he doesn't love you. And realistically, Chantal, you expose yourself. I've said this before. When a person is lying about a big part of their life, it's going to be hard to keep up with the lies. She is lying about an important part of her life that she wishes was better or actually happened. This is the same thing that happened with her ex, BB, if you were not there. In the beginning, maybe things happen and then not so much. By the way, I've been on the internet for a little bit. I know the way things work. Someone is about to think or say this. If you're going to type this, I'll save you the trouble. Just because you're laying in different directions doesn't mean something, you know, can't happen at different times of the day. You don't need to do that. That's true. In this case, it just does not apply because it's telling you about her daily, everyday life for her, right? In this case, it doesn't apply. You know why? Because it's obvious nothing's going on. That vibe, that like nervous energy just isn't there. They have zero chemistry. This is Beck and Amberlynn all over again when everybody was saying we all know that Beck and Amberlynn not doing anything. Amber kept lying and then Beck exposed the tea that they were not. And it's obvious that nothing has been going on. Nothing will go on. Her big tea moment of when she's like, oh my God, oh my God, I would never get into a relationship like that. You sure would, girl. You sure would. Her big drama, her big statements during this relationship to her audience, oh, if you know me, you know I would never get into a relationship that that wasn't going on. Here's what I know for sure. You would marry a stranger from the internet that you haven't even been on one date with that doesn't live in Canada just to show everyone that somebody would marry you. If you're if you're the type of person that you're going to marry a stranger that you haven't even met just to stick it to the haters and your ex non boyfriend that somebody would marry you, you would get into any relationship with any stipulations as long as the world saw you as married. Chantal, you forget that we know exactly who you are, which is why we're very good at reading who you're not. And you know how I know that? Look, this is just my feeling. I've been watching Foodie Beauty for a long time, and I think that she has differences from Amberlynn Reed, uh, personality-wise. And, um, you know, everybody always says that, you know, Foodie is worse than Amber, and I know what Foodie has done, and I don't agree with anything and just terrible behavior. But let's be clear. She will expose herself way more than Amberlynn Reed, okay? And she just did. I'm sorry. You married that stranger because you wanted to prove it to your ex-nom boyfriend that 
you know, somebody wanted to marry you. And I don't think this is the story girl that you thought it was going to be. I think she had expectations. Maybe something happened and then nothing ever happened again. This happened in her other relationships with BB. Never mind with a stranger off the internet like your husband. Your husband has already cheated on you. Your husband has already told you that he doesn't love you. There is no romance going on. There's no romantic, nervous, any of that type of energy. I'm a hundred on this as far as this is what I think. I think it may have happened a few times, but she's telling you about her daily life. Just like she lied about the fasting, just like she lied about where, what store she was going and FFG exposed her. This is another lie best exposed by the person who's creating them. Foodie beauty. Nothing is going on. Get a Kermit. I didn't have to fast while I was traveling. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I haven't really been doing that right now. It's a surprise. But I'm still Muslim. I still believe in, in God. I don't even believe in God right now. Let's go eat somewhere. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that once she's in Canada, she can tell you the truth that she has never fasted and hasn't been fasting. What a lot. Look at her older post stating that she fasts, okay? And there's a lot of clips. I just can't find them right now. Um, It's not daylight in this picture. It's called The Lamp, which has been there in almost every video. Mukbang also, breaking fast time happens when it's still light out. The sun starts going down at that time, but for a bit, it is still light out, so that proves nothing. Actually proves that people on this platform are so dedicated to trying to find any nuance or any hint that I am not following Islam to a T. Chantal, this is a post stating that you fast. Here you are explaining that you don't. Like I said, you have diabetes, or even if you didn't have diabetes, okay, you're trying to say that you don't fast. Okay, people will accept your honesty and respect your honesty. The fact that this woman has lied the entire time that she was in Kuwait, that she was fasting, and now admits that she isn't, is preposterous. This, Chantal, is why it's not so much that YouTube is a popularity contest like you claim that it was. It's people don't care for the lies and your actions. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not so much that she's not fasting. I don't care. It's that she lied the whole time she was in Kuwait that she was fasting during Ramadan. And she's not. Like I said, she has diabetes. Or people will understand the truth. It's the lies. It's not what she's lying about. It's the same with Amber. It's not what they're lying about. It's the actual act of lying. So as soon as you get into... Canada, you can tell the truth, right? Rinse, lather, Delulu. You mark my words. Something big is coming. A front of drama. Expensive it is to like start up again, so every little bit helps. Like when your car breaks down, you have to move, and you have to travel internationally. I just wanted to say that you do not have to travel internationally at all. If you are trying to say here, which what she's doing is she's thanking people for their super chat. She's asking people for donations, okay? Uh, you're saying that if your car breaks down, all right, get a job. Uh, also, as far as the situation of you having to travel internationally, you're only traveling internationally because you couldn't find a guy to marry you in Canada. No, I just got a sudden shiver. That's the reality, okay? So when you say that you want your Beezers or people that watch you to donate because you have to travel internationally, you don't have to travel internationally at all. You're choosing to because it was the only way that you could tell your ex non boyfriends and the haters that you got married. Like, realistically, I've said this so many times before, she could have gotten married in Canada after dating somebody for a while and it would have taken some time. But she wanted to prove to the haters and her ex non boyfriend then, you know, she could get married. Chantal, why in the world should your Beezers pay for you to travel internationally to a guy that already said he didn't love you, to a guy that cheated on you, only so you could pretend that you're married? Make it make sense. The Great Kuwait is the saddest. Like, why was it depressing for you guys? Just because you you guys are used to me having such an outgoing personality to being completely muted or what? Oh, this has nothing to do with Kuwait. Why would you blame it on Kuwait? This has to do with you pretending to be someone that you're not. What you are showing currently is a falsehood. And one of the things about a YouTube audience is that, at least after a while, but in your case, it's obvious, uh, people can tell when you're faking it. What you are presenting is smoke and mirrors. You are not who you say you are. So when you can't be yourself, people don't like that. People do not like to be deceived and defrauded. 
we know who you are and it is not the image that you are projecting there are many people that have truly become someone else you're just not one of these people people want to see you be messy get into trouble rage drama and that's who you really are i love it when she says in this video she's like questioning who she really is yeah because you're pretending you have been pretending in this video alone she tells you that she's not really um you know with her husband in that way she also tells you that she's not fasting what about the year that you were lying and saying you were fasting it's not about whether she fasts or not it's about the lies while you are in fact you know oftentimes deceiving your audience the reason that people didn't like it was because it wasn't the real you you're faking it <laughs> ways thoughts comments kermits leave it in the dislikes down below about chantal what do you think about all of this drama let me know let's move on to a pokemon go update Okay, let's move on to Pokemon Go local shadow raids for, you know, Shadow Mewtwo that were just recently happening. I have to say I'm pretty disappointed. Now, I've always known that all shadow raids are local raids, which means you cannot invite your friends unless they are standing right next to you physically. And here's what I have to say about that. No. That, that's a big no for me. Here's the thing. I totally understand that the game was created. We've talked about this before. In order to explore your surroundings. And then they did remote raids. Because they had a situation happening. With where the world was at a standstill. And in a bad situation. So I totally understand. But Mewtwo. Shadow Mewtwo. Is possibly the most coveted in my opinion. Pokemon in the entire game. And the idea that we had to take it down. With two or three people. Because uh, listen. I'm not in a rural area, but it doesn't matter because not everyone is at that that exact gym when you're at that exact gym. These raids started at 6 a.m. So, yes, I bought a bunch of, you know, like actual passes. Eventually, I had to like, you know, those premium passes. And it was just annoying because it was me and like my one or two other friends. And it took a long time to take down this Pokemon like I really could have benefited and a lot of people everyone could have benefited if we could have just invited our friends also you're gonna see in this part of the video that Shadow Mewtwo was incredibly difficult to catch I actually missed a few of them I just couldn't catch them they were so difficult to catch I'm not about to waste a you know like a master ball on it I just think that even if shadow raids, which they are, shadow raids are local only raids, you cannot remote raid this, you can't invite your friends that are not physically standing next to you from other countries or other cities, but I just feel like they, in my opinion, what I think and how I feel for Shadow Mewtwo, there should have been an exception made because Shadow Mewtwo, you know, Shadow Pokemon, they get enraged. You have to use these things in the game. It's just a, like, honestly, like, why couldn't we just invite our friends? Why are there never any exceptions made in the game? Like, for example, the majority of my friends are not even in the United States. The people that I raid with are not from the United States. They're just not the majority of, of course, I have some people here, but, you know, the majority of the like really hardcore raid are not even from the United States. Never mind, they're certainly not from my city. So I just feel like, you know, it was money spent and it was very difficult to do. I missed a bunch of them. I did get, get one shiny, only one. I did a short on it. But this Pokemon is incredibly hard to take down with two or three people. It's hard. And sometimes my third friend couldn't show up. So it's like, sometimes you have to do it with two people. It's very, very difficult. I missed a few of the raids. We lost a bunch of the raids, you know. Um, yes, if you have the right counters powered up, you're, you should be good to go. But it's still difficult. The point is not how difficult it is. I'm just, you know, I'm just telling you my personal, like, you know, opinion on the situation. But I just feel like for this highly coveted Pokemon, they should have allowed us to invite our friends. Does that make sense to anyone? And this Pokemon was so difficult to take down. And just in general, I am just really disappointed with just in general how we're not allowed to raid how we want, how we were allowed to raid before during the last few years. I just feel like this game needs its remote raids to be unlimited and to be back because it's really, really, really difficult to not be able to invite your friends when you need the most. Much like in life, when you need your friends most and they can't come, like, it sucks. Does that make sense? And this Pokemon is just hard to catch. I don't know. I feel like 
so many people were complaining about this. Yes, some people will come and comment here and they'll say you can take down Shadow Mewtwo with two people if it's like, you know, powered up counters. I know that, but I'm not responsible for my friend's Pokemon and some people just don't want to power up their Pokemons and some people don't even know what, you know, Pokemon to use. Like, have you rated for Shadow Mewtwo? Did you get a good Shadow Mewtwo? I mean, you were able to take away frustration, which is the move that Shadow Pokemon have. Obviously, this was released during the weekend of the Team Go Rocket takeover. Team Go Rocket will be back. I'm sure Shadow Mewtwo will be back as well. I feel there needs to be an exception made for this Pokemon. Moving on. Here are some Team Go Rocket leaders. Here's Sierra and me trying to take Sierra down. I'm just going to tell you, I do these for two reasons. To get, like, the leader eggs because there should be a new shiny in there. Sand Dial, I still have not gotten that shiny. And also because I am just really, really, really looking to get the two new shinies, the Trap Ink and the other one, Trap Inch, whatever. Um, hasn't happened yet. What a big surprise. What a big shaka. So basically, Sableye is also weak to fairy that is why we are using the one the only togekiss i highly advise you to put a fire attack on um togekiss just because why not and i think it's also super unfair that team leaders from team rocket are able to use two shields since when and why victory bell wonderful nice to see you i don't like victory bell i don't understand like i'll be honest there was never any hype around victory ball but i just don't get it like i didn't have a counter for victory ball i don't think it's such a cool pokemon look at how cartana that is doing not natural neutral damage almost took down the entire pokemon yeah cartana this is a terrible this is a terrible matchup i thought that sierra would have Hondoom, so i put in a water pokemon and she did not but that is so wild to me that how much neutral damage Cartana did that she took almost half of the Pokemon out. So this is just me trying to, you know, finish off the game. I will say that obviously this is, as I said already, this was a bad idea. I didn't know she had this grass Pokemon. Okay, here I am trying to get a shiny Pokemon from Arlo. I do like this Pokemon that I'm trying to farm down here because he waves at you. And honestly, is there any cuter Pokemon than one that just waves to you while he attacks you? Probably not. So it's interesting how he just took half of Charizard's health with whatever fast attack he has, which is ridiculous. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you guys know, but when you're fighting the team leaders and also the boss Giovanni, what happens is how hard... Um, um, like it is to fight them depends on your level. So you're going to get Pokemon on your level. I'm level 50. So, you know, I have level 50 Pokemon coming after me. If you're level 35 or 40, it's going to be easier for you to fight them. Here is my shadow Mamoswine trying to take down this ghost Pokemon. And are we succeeding? We're not really. That's well, we took down half of the health, but you know, that's the thing about shadow Pokemon. They take double the damage and deal. Okay, damage. Okay, Um. so here we go. Okay, my Swampert is trying to farm him down. Swampert is really like the worst possible case for this Pokemon. The reason that I have Swampert here is because a lot of the times Arlo has Charizard, right? So, okay, whatever. We took him down. And the last contestant is Scizor. That my water Pokemon is going to do nothing. Uh, towards the problem is you don't know who's in the middle and last spot for these team leaders and I'm just trying to get a shiny so I'm just going to do as many of them as I can and that's gonna well it did it did it did do some damage and then we're just going to take out our Charizard and we're going to win the battle that is about it for today's video I want to thank you so very much for watching I appreciate you being here if you enjoyed today's video please check out this other video is popping up here you may enjoy it not enjoy it if you don't enjoy it go and leave it a dislike thank you so very much for watching leave all your comments and the Kermits and dislikes down below and you know I will see you very very soon in the next one thanks so much for being here bye